April 1994, South Africa and amazing 471,000 plus square miles of land nestle below the Tropic of Capricorn, a country whose origins in the modern sense started with the appearance of the first Europeans, the Portuguese. Unknowingly, Vasco da Gama sailed around the Cape of Good Hope in 1502. This voyage would open the door for the Dutch to enter the region. While warring with Spain, they took possession of the East India Company and renamed it the Dutch East India Company. Under circumstantial occurrences, a Dutch ship wrecked in Table Bay in 1648. Survivors settled on the mainland until rescued a considerable time later. Word of this majestic place prompted the company's decision to take possession of the colony. John van Riebeck, a surgeon by trade, was selected to accomplish this task. He was successful. By the time the next group of settlers, the British came, it was clear to the indigenous people that with imperialism, colonialism, and Christianity, also came the end of traditional existence and inalienable rights as they once knew. In 1713, smallpox wiped out nearly half the Hottentots. Settlers had reached the remote basin of the Orange River by 1760. In 1791, there were an estimated 14,600 Europeans and 17,000 slaves in South Africa. In addition to being the home of approximately 30 million people, South Africa contains a wealth of natural resources, including diamonds and uranium. South Africa has an ethnically diverse population well suited for a people-centered society. Until 1994, Africans could not vote. They were treated as less than equal to their European colonial counterparts. During this period, politics was used to support practices of white exploitation and control over the indigenous people. The most important historic event for South Africa Certainly, that's a picture that's worth a thousand words. But now, there exists a vote for the people. South Africa didn't represent black people. South Africa represented a minority of very privileged white people. And foreigners, including foreigners, foreigners that were white, came to South Africa and had status were given recognition, were given the vote, where the indigenous people, black people here, were not allowed to do that. We were denied our own heritage. We were denied that. We were told they would classify you and reclassify you. They would tell you that, no, you're, you're, you're a Bantu with a bit of colored, or, or you're a colored from Cape Town. These were the things that they tried to say you have no identity. You are just an entity in a land that is for a white minority. Yeah, honestly, but it's over now. We can't remember so, so much about it. Yeah. So here in South Africa, so we are struggling, but uh, now we think this is the end of the road. Uh, we need support from us. Questions remain. Will the right to vote represent the end of centuries of the struggle for human rights? What of land and wealth distribution? How do the people feel? I feel great. This is my first time I'm going to take this country. <laughs> yeah, that uh, the black guys are equal now. There's no um, apartheid anymore. And uh, we're all equal. Uh, a black can do anything I can do, and vice versa. That's how it should be, yeah. Not only Natal, even the cave. No ink, no pens, pencils. Midnight, when the old the flag came down in, and the new flag came up, that was the most painful and at the same time pleasurable moment in my whole entire life. I feel so free and happy, you know, I don't know. But there is just that 
bubbling over, you know. Overall, voting transpired smoothly. However, there were a few problems. In one center, first-time voters were offended when asked to complete ballots in pencil. The problem was settled quickly. I wish that uh, our young people in America would take the cue and take voting seriously and realize that as they control the, 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 the persons who make policies in our community, they also control the destiny of our community. They have to be involved in the process. If they're not involved in the process, then the process won't work for them. We saw uh, maybe a couple of elderly women, in fact, whose ages are 106 and 103, respectively, uh, coming to the polls, coming to cast their vote. And what that showed was uh, seriousness in the whole exercise. You must say what is inside you. I always believe that fear no evil, you know, mm. go for it. As an African man, I mean, you, you've been held back for a long time. Now's the chance to go for it. Same as Americans. They had chance before and they still have, and they still have, they still have uh, a chance to, to, to vote. And then they must go for it. Don't, don't, don't abuse the chance you have. And to our young people in America, who to a large extent <coughs> have simply lost hope, who will be stimulated, I think, by what they see their black sisters and brothers doing here in South Africa, it will send a new message. It will send a message of hope and possibility. <coughs> Just made it. It was really nice. I enjoyed it. The waiting and all, it was quite exciting. I mean, people waited for 344 years to vote. I mean, what was a couple of hours going to do to Former South African laws serve to complement social as well as economic growth and stability for the white minority, while at the same time ignoring the needs of Africans. For many, this vote is for tomorrow. I felt as though the country was really sinking into a very bad, violent state just before the elections, and that part was, that part was scary. I was at the AEC and we had daily tallies of how many people were dying. There were a dozen people that were being killed every day in Natal. There's tension everywhere. People are living in fear in South Africa and I don't actually blame them because you, you don't know what, hap what, what might happen. You get out of your flat, you get out of your building. Anybody can just shoot you. The bombings have been happening. People are living in fear so it's better to stay at home and watch the TV. I mean you'll, you'll be more informed if you stay home and watch TV. Fear and violence in South Africa prior to and after the elections is a reality. The bombing of the African National Congress headquarters, not to mention the assassination of Chris Hani, leader of the military wing of the ANC, attracted close attention to the elections. One of the first goals of the new government would be the establishment and ratification of a constitution. This constitution would be based on 26 negotiated constitutional principles. This arrangement was originally rejected by the Nkatha Freedom Party and the White Conservative Party. However, both eventually agreed to participate in the historic event. Well, to the monarch of the Zulus, I would like to say I am very proud of the monarch. I respect him and we are very proud as South Africans and we would like to keep the kingdom of the Zulus in existence. We love the king and we say let us jointly fight and improve the new era. Yeah, I love peace now. Although peace and voting were the main topics of concern for many South Africans, the country's history suggests there are no easy solutions for the future. Africans have traditionally been suspicious of any arrangements with the minority. The British waged countless wars against the Zulu. They were able to destroy Zulu sovereignty and claim all Zulu land. This is but a single example of the oppression experienced by Africans in the region. I would say there was a double oppression. Double oppression in that not only are you oppressed as a black person, but you also oppressed as a female person. 
So I'd say double prison. Oh yes, this is the freedom for all the people of South Africa, for the nation of South Africa. Even those that were afraid have been liberated. And I know now that there are a lot of white people that hated apartheid, but were powerless to do anything about it. So to them too, it's a uh, time for rejoicing because they, are, they, they, they have thrown away their shackles. Actions, while not perfect, provided an opportunity for millions of first-time voters to finally have a say in determining their own future. While we have 27 different political parties here in South Africa, perhaps that's too many. But one thing is sure that two in America is too few. And we must find ways of moving away from the Democrats and Republicans. In essence, there's no difference in those parties. And we can see why Lenny Grenier uh, was not confirmed to be the uh, Assistant U.S. Attorney for Civil Rights because he was talking about other models of democracy. And so uh, one of the things that I'm com uh, committed to try to do is to try to break up this two-party system in the U.S. It's as much as uh, four or five years ago, it was hard to even fathom this idea, this idea of democracy, of a democratic South Africa for all South Africans. So it's, it's incredible. I feel like it's the black man's power now. It's, I can see some black powers coming up. You know. I voted for Mandela. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I also voted Mandela. South Africa, we love you. What can be said of the first non-racial elections ever held in South Africa? What will the date of April 27, 1994, bring to mind in the future? The wait may prove to be just as much of a struggle as obtaining the right to vote. The level of enthusiasm that I have experienced in the campaign the last two weeks is the level of enthusiasm that is so desperately needed by African Americans. Um, in the United States, I guess most importantly, I should say Atlanta. Um, we've been from Cape Town to Durban to all around Johannesburg, and everybody seems to be a part of this election, which we seem to have lost in, in the United States. And I think that uh, one of the things that will come out of the election of President Mandela is a renewed hope for black Americans. Mm -hmm. The concept of apartheid was first espoused through the teachings of the Dutch Reformed Church. Just like slavery in the United States, apartheid was the result of racism. And racism was the byproduct of apartheid. A major obstacle for Mandela will be the legacy of apartheid. He's a hero. He's still a hero and he'll still be a hero. He never changed. Once Nelson Mandela, always Nelson Mandela. There's only one president for South Africa this time. It's Nelson Mandela. It, it, I mean, the whole world knows it. <laughs> Mandela rules. He is a real man. Yes. He is a true human being. All that is good. The Messiah, the Lord, the Savior. Apartheid would not become government policy until 1948, when the United Party would lose to the National Party. They won with the promise of rigid enforcement of color bar legislation in an effort to safeguard white wage earners. Can Mandela lead the new South Africa? Oh, 
come and go, but the organization and the collective leadership that has looked after the fortune and reverses of this organization will always be there. And the ideas I express are not the ideas invented in my own mind. They stem from our fundamental policy document, the Freedom Charter from the decisions, resolutions of the National Conference, and from the decisions of the National Executive Committee. That is the nature of our organization. It is not the individuals that matter. It is the collective leadership. The collective leadership. Mandela's major task may be bringing about reconciliation in a new South Africa. Mr. Mandela and the African National Congress will do everything to secure a better life for South Africans. And that, that, that runs the gamut. But focus must also reflect the needs of the general public. Jobs should be open, wide open, so that well, the people can get. And uh, thereafter, housing can always be employed. Education, in the meantime, is also relevant to be you know, given to the kids. Houses, better education, better future. They need to send in people who would help in the organizing education or vocation, vocational 
uh, training of people in order to get them to start working and earning a living. That's a way to create, make them be able to support themselves. Equality and more job opportunities and housing, especially for the poor, the elderly and so forth. The old system left us with a lot of problems and a lot of racial conflict and, 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 and poverty and those kind of things. So I hope that uh, um, this president will be able to address the masses, you know, the masses, the suffering masses has always been, and not worry about the fears of the whites, you know. It's not that I'm racialistic, uh, but this is a chance for all the black people to become equal with them and then live a better life, you know. Well, I think that uh, unfortunately the blacks have got a, a rather bad perspective at the moment. They, because, I mean, there is a lot of unemployment and so on. But if they sort of listen to what's going on, they may be able to make a better life for themselves. But whether the government will make any difference is, is very um, sort of. Um, it, it doesn't matter. You know, when you're right on the ground, the government of the day doesn't have that much to do with your thing. I mean, if they make jobs available, fine, but if they don't, well, that's nice, isn't it? Overcoming apartheid will remain a challenge, for there are still those whites steadfast in the belief that they have an ordained right to rule and accumulate the wealth of South Africa, although every mode of production is dependent on African labor. Well, the first pain that we went through as blacks, it was not given a chance of having a decision in, uh, 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 you know, planning of a country, in the government. He, the second one, it was not having a government of our own choice. And the educational system that we govern, it was not of our own choice. And we felt that we are being limited. And those limitations really makes us feel angry. Now that Mandela is president, and his African National Congress has amassed a substantial number of national legislative seats, the true test will regard how and when both can make good on election promises, chiefly the building of one million new houses and providing two and one half million new jobs. Will promises alone motivate the people to forgive and forget? Uh, we are going to be able to forgive, but the main problem is you're not going to forget. It's the main problem but we will be able to forgive. If there's one black that would tell me to my face, he would forget or she would forget, she's a liar or he's a liar. Racism has always been the foundations of South African property rights. Through the Kruger Land Act of 1913, Dutch settlers were allowed to go around the country claiming Africans' herds of cattle for themselves thus relegating the original occupants to approximately 13% of the land. This drove Africans off their land and converted them into cheap wage migrant laborers. Africans were also prevented from intellectual development legally with laws such as the Bantu Education Act. Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana once wrote, attitudes of colonialism die hard like the attitudes of slavery whose hangover still dominates behavior in certain parts of the Western Hemisphere. Was this what led to the death of Chris Hani, one of the rising young leaders of the ANC? Some believe that his assassination alone served as the catalyst that confirmed that the elections must take place. For the fear was, if there were no elections, there would be massive bloodshed. Maybe for us to be where we are, we had to lose him. Because if it wasn't for Chris, this country wouldn't have seen the need for us to even set up a date of the elections. So we owe all this to him. We should dedicate all this to Chris. He made it possible for us. For the people of South Africa, and the world who are watching. This is indeed a joyous night for the human spirit. This is your victory too. You helped and apartheid. You stood with us through the transition. I watched along with you all 
as the tens of thousands of our people stood patiently in long queues for many hours. Some sleeping on the open ground overnight, waiting to cast this momentous vote. South Africa's heroes are legend across the generations. Something goes out in my in my boat, you know, as soon as I vote, you know. I love my country, I'm proud of it and I wanna be part of the team. African Congress, the Communist Party of South Africa, the Indian Congress, the African National Congress, the Liberal White Congress of Democrats, and the National Party now hold the future of the country in their hand. The future is all that demands attention in the new South Africa. Issues such as the name of the country, economic development, AIDS, education, and wealth distribution will gather most of the attention. So what will be ahead for tomorrow? For the children, the men and women who have lived for a date with opportunity. Now is the time for celebration. For South Africans to join together to celebrate the birth of democracy.